I'm Miss Dutton and I'm going to be doing a short video about how our books are organised. So today I'm going to talk about the non-fiction books in our library. It seems that some students, you know who you are, you don't seem to think there's any structural organisation to our books. I've seen you take a book off the shelf in the back of the library and put it back somewhere else in the front of the library and I get very grumpy and you seem to not understand why. I probably do get too grumpy. Um, but books are organised to help you. They're organised in a way that it's easy to find. So when you move one book five places, it's still not going to be in the right place. It's still going to... When I look for that book, I'm going to look in a certain specific place. If it's not there, I'm going to think the book's gone missing. Okay, so how are books organised, Miss Dutton? Are they organised alphabetically? No. Are they organised by colour? No. They are organised by subject. So imagine you are looking for a book about volcanoes. If you're looking alphabetically, not all the books are going to be called volcanoes. Some might be called natural disasters, some might be called hurricanes, tornadoes and volcanoes. Um, they could be named after famous volcanoes, all sorts. So we need to think of a way that we can organise all books in one, about one certain subject into the same area. So lots of people have done this. Um, the system that we use in the library is called the Dewey Decimal System. It was invented by this very handsome man here, Melville Dewey, who worked at Columbia University um, and he devised the Dewey Decimal System as a way to organise books into those subjects. So he's done it into 10 subject areas. So I'm going to give you a really basic guide. Um, here you can see 000, that's where all the general knowledge is going to go. 500, that's where all the science will go. It goes into a bit more detail than that because even though we've only got quite a small library, if we just put any science book as 500, they're still not going to be in order. So within science, um, it gets into some even more specific orders. So for example, anything beginning with 59 will be uh, an animal or a living creature. 599 will be all the mammals. And then it gets more complicated, it gets to decimal points. So 599 point something will be monkeys. Um, so that all books of a subject are together. You don't need to know that at the moment because we have we don't have the hugest collection. Imagine if you went to a library which was as big as a school and it was all books about history. Then you're gonna to need to have more detail to our to the codes, you're gonna to need to know more yourself. But even if you just remember these 10 basic rules, that should help you to find books. So first one is 000, so that's general knowledge. So a lot of the kind of books are like fact of the day, um, world's best facts, um, Guinness World Records, they're all going to be in the 000s. And that goes 000 up to 099. Next one is 100, so philosophy and psychology. So philosophy is like the history of ideas, um, how you can see the world, how to think. Psychology is more about what's going on in the brain, the subconscious, emotions. We don't have a great deal of books about that. We have got some really good philosophy books, including Graphic Guide to Philosophy, which we just got in. Next is 200. So this is the books on religion. So this includes religious texts like the Quran and the Bible, but also books about different religious movements. So, for example, if you're studying Hinduism, we've got books there about, just gen generally about Hinduism, we've also got books about Hindu festivals, um, costume, tradition, all those sorts of things. So if you've got any RE homework from Mr. Konu, who's such a really good homework, then look in the 200s. Next is 300s. So this is social sciences. So this covers a really broad range of things. It includes things like politics, different political parties, also crime, um, problems with drugs, problems with homelessness, all sorts of things. That's the section that you really want to look in if you're on our Model UN or on the debate club. Next is the 400s. This is where we keep our languages books. We have a separate section which is fiction in other languages, so that's where our Spanish and Portuguese fiction is. This is normally where we keep our dictionaries, so English dictionaries, Mandarin dictionaries, Spanish dictionaries that will help you with your GCSEs, as well as some simpler books, so the first 1,000 Portuguese words illustrated, or little Japanese textbooks to teach Japanese. Next is 500s, so science. We probably have more books in the 500s than any other section. Um, it's divided up, not just like um, chemistry, biology and physics, but like five, I think 50 to 
509 or 510 maybe is mathematics. That's incorporated into science. Uh, we have loads of awesome books about cool experiments, including things like flammable bubbles. So if you want to do some cool experiments in your class, maybe you could find out about some in this area and then show your teacher and convince them to do it in class. Um, it's also where all the animal books are, so you might find me sitting there on break. Um, 600, this is technology, so buildings, um, cars, robots. It's also where books are about the body, so that might be a bit confusing because I personally, I would look in uh, science. Also, if you're looking for, in the sports section which is coming up, um, and you're looking for books about the body, about you know sports nutrition, uh, flexibility, it's probably going to be in the 600s as well. Um, again, if ever you have trouble finding books, you can just speak to me or our library assistants and we will help you. Next is 700. So this is our second largest area. So it's art and recreation. So that includes everything from painting to photography to music to, um, we've got song books there. It also includes all the sport books. So football books, netball, rugby. Um, obviously our football books are very popular. Next is 800. So this is literature. Our fiction books are divided separately. They're, they're stored in a different part of the library. They're down the back and they're done by alphabetical order by the author's last name and also accelerated reader order. However, our 800, this is where we keep our plays and our poems. We have tons because obviously poetry is very important here and you all study Shakespeare, a lot of you do drama GCSE, so this is a really good section to look in. We have loads of books about Shakespeare. So if you're studying, say Macbeth in class, we also have a simple version, we have a graphic guide version, we have a version which has the Shakespearean text on one side of the page and modern text on the other side. We also have books about Shakespeare, about Shakespearean theatre, all sorts, they're all found here. Next is 900s. So this is history and geography. Um, so again, quite a broad area. This is maybe one of those places where you want to learn more than just that first number. So for example, if you're looking at European history, it's going to start with 9 and 4. I think English and Welsh is 942. And then for different time periods, it's going to be 942 point another number. However, again, we don't have a huge collection, so just remember 94 and you can have a look. If you forget any of these numbers, don't worry. All the ends of our shelves have got posters that remind you. It will say 900 history and geography and give you a few examples, and it has lots of colourful pictures. I've also got bookmarks that explain. And I've got these cardboard standouts that say how to find it, and give you, it gives you more of a breakdown of where different things are. So lastly, if you do need help finding a book, please have a look for yourself and see if you can. It's quite nice to browse those sorts of areas because instead of me just pulling out a book which I think is going to be good for your RE homework, maybe have a browse, find one that you like to look at yourself. Also, it saves me some time, and you're going to need that skill when you go to university. However, if you need help, you can always ask me and always ask my student librarians. Thank you.